With me is Bryce Shanka. This is the American Car Classic Radio Program podcast. Hey, listen, I want to thank you for tuning in on the radio. As always, is Greg Billings. That's Ronnie Garvin on the guitar. John Price on the drums. Man, and uh, Tommy King on the bass. That was, you know, that was a stranger band. Uh, thank you all for tuning in today. Uh, it's a couple days before Thanksgiving, and Bryce and I are here. We're going to try and bring you a cute little show and have some fun with that. Uh, we're going to talk about... Well, we're going to talk about some uh, racing news. It's going to be extra cute. <laughs> yeah. And, and, uh, and I, I'm wearing this. I'm not going to wear this long. This is my uh, Icicles uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers hat. Uh, they gave them out at the last home game. A friend of mine got me this, and uh, thank you. Uh, but it made me think of uh, uh, Greg, the tie-in. Greg sang the national anthem at Tampa Stadium one time during a Bucks game. Uh, so pretty cool. So that's the old icicle Buccaneers hat there, uh, kind of throwing it back some old school stuff. So, yeah. So, um, uh, we believe that we're going to get Todd Byron on and we're going to talk about the Dick Arbitel new year's day memorial run, a uh, rod run that Todd puts on. And I think this is going to be the third one in a row consecutively that he's taken over and doing after COVID and all that. And that'll be a lot of fun. Um, so, so, uh, today's show, look, um, we just had a, it's November. It's the end of November, man. The time has just flipped by. You've, you've, you know, it just, Bryce, you with me? Is that true? Yeah, especially, especially here in Florida, because like it's, you know, we really only have the two seasons. It's kind of yeah, just the rain, daylight savings, the, ra- the rainy season and the not so rainy <laughs> season. Um, so yeah, my first run through holidays last year here in Florida. It was, it just didn't feel Christmassy at all, Yeah, which is strange, but you have to find ways to, uh, you know, to, to do that because the holidays are important and you can't miss those. Yeah. The oak trees get confused for a few months before January. And so they drop leaves and then regrow it and drop leaves and regrow it. And then, and then it, and, and in the spring they pollinate and stop pollinating and pollinate and stop pollinating and they don't know what to do. And the palm trees, they just, don't change. You could put Christmas lights on them, but I think then you're more of the uh, Mexican Mexican fiestas or something of what do they do there. No, that's what we're doing at my house, though. Are they? <laughs> or is it festus? The, I guess we're Mexicans. Uh, no, no, maybe it's the festus from Seinfeld's. But uh, you see the palm trees decorated. Golf and Auto, we're getting ready to put the lights up here around the building um, tomorrow and Wednesday. Uh, try to do what we can for for the holiday seasons. It is coming. It is hard to tell when it's because we're all still wearing. I know short life's so rough t-shirt. here in Florida when we uh, you know we can't tell that it's. Christmas because it's still 80 degrees and we're going to the beach. But there are no carolers here. You're not Christmas caroling. You're not the Christmas parades. Look, man, Santa, he's on that, he's know, on that float. In the bay, they it go. looks hot, man, hot. He is not happy. It's December 13th and he's sweating. Oh, it's just horrible to watch. Have you done the, the golf cart parade before? The golf cart Christmas parade? At Barefoot Bay? Yeah. No. <laughs> that's no. people would go hard we've we've we participated in the christmas parade i guess with all the golf carts but we've brought some cars uh done that in the past yeah so yeah yeah looking forward to it okay you have your own golf cart no no i have not uh, i don't think i'm going to do the golf cart thing um you're gonna be a, do they throw water balloons at people or anything like that confetti balls anything like that no they just they just decorate their carts with christmas lights and but as a spectator do you get to get into it well it, the drinking part yes but what if you went and got some of those fucking new you know new year's eve things or something you'd be the only one it'd be oh my god i should have done that too you might have to talk to the sheriffs about that afterwards too no no you're allowed to pop those off they're not explosive they don't go as far as the cart <laughs> yeah it could be i'm just telling you you go ahead and test that theory and let me know I test theories. We went through, we went through, I drove a 76 uh, Corvette that we had just built a big motor on and it was a manual transmission. And uh, we drove that through the barefoot Bay parade one time. And I probably did 30 burnouts by request. People, ah! and people behind us would light them up and do it, man. 
in Barefoot Bay. And we oh, went yeah. through Snug Harbor there and everything else too. Yeah, people love fun. Well, some do, but some of those people in there are not. Oh, that's everywhere. Happy. But most of it's on, you know, they, they, stay, <laughs> they stay home and they stay on Facebook and that's why I don't go on Facebook. Yeah, you don't. You don't. Yeah, a lot of people don't, man. And um, um, yeah, I could get political, but we're not going to. So um, racing, I, I, wanted to, I wanted to catch up because I talk about NASCAR and then we get busy and I'm ADHD and we start talking about other things and things get left out of shows. You know, so um, NASCAR, uh, the season is over and it ended in what? Arizona, uh, you got me. That's your yeah. beat. Yeah. I, don't, I don't I don't really ever know what's going on with NASCAR unless it's uh, coming through Daytona, you know, and I might go see that one. Yeah, day, I think they ended in Phoenix. It won't be. But um, <clears throat> Ryan Blaney, Blaney won the season and uh, he's a 29 year old from Ohio. So it's not like it's typical for him to, to win that Kyle Larson came in second with it. And why William Byron came in third, really thought a lot of people thought that he was going to be uh, the winner of this because, uh, uh, man, he just had a strong season. I think he had like six wins or something. They were going to, they were really sitting there to do it and everything. Uh, but the, the race came down for those three. They all finished one, two, and three, uh, or on the last couple laps, they were one, two, and three, and then things got mixed up and what have you, but it was really big. The only other notable was Denny Hamlin was, um, in fifth place and Ross Chastain was in ninth um, but, uh, that's Penske's fourth NASCAR championship. That's, well, that's, ben, Penske knows what he's doing. I mean, he bought the entire Indianapolis. Yeah. Race Museum, track property. Yeah. And, yeah. I mean, yeah. he's, and he's, he just, he, he's a top, top shelf operation. That guy. Yeah. I wish he would, he would get, uh, trailers for competition with you all. And I'm a U-Haul dealer too, so I say that proudly. But uh, yeah, I I, I um, wish there was more competition for them. So uh, I, I got a question about NASCAR that maybe you can answer because I've been seeing some headlines where I guess some drivers are shuffling around, they're changing teams now, and there's kind of different things going just on. Just like any other sport, yeah. Um, I know in, in, and as everybody knows, I'm the F1 fan. Yeah. And they're- and an IMSA guy. I mean, you're, you're an IMSA you know, guy. kind and, of stuff, you know, it's all- and, in IMSA, you know the the driver skill level is is denoted by your you know bronze status. Your it, they have different grades of driver. Uh, what do you mean by that? <clears throat> well, the the drivers have different. Um, I don't know how you put it. Like a level, right? So Jim Pace, who was badass, world famous. He was a teacher out at Bob Banderant and stuff like this. He he. Um, he would be the guy that was a level. I mean, he drove the, the Mercedes gull wings, you know, big stuff. Yeah. It has to do with, um, there's and points. Then there's, there's Brian Johnson from ACDC, who's an avid racer and does all his brings his own cars and all this stuff, but he's not racing for points or for pride. He's racing because he loves a guy. In a right. So car. he would be referred to in as a gentleman driver. You know, a, a lot of times teams will bring in a guy, because he brings a lot of money with him and he wants to drive the car. And so they give him um, part-time in a long endurance race or whatever. They give him a right. seat to do that. And then he basically funds part of the team. Like the guy from Australia or something. In right? order to do that. Yeah, okay. Um, but in terms of the full-time drivers, there's different there's different grades of them. But my, okay. my question is... Yeah. You know, in F1, it's very obvious the skill levels of the different drivers, even though you know, it's the top 20 guys in the world. You can tell the world the difference from one to the next. But can you? Because in Formula One, you can control everything except the air pressure in your tires. Yep. You can control how much gas you're getting, how much timing you're saying, how much brake front and rear. Right. So how do you know that when, oh, it's a great pass and the dude just didn't hit the ETR, I mean, the, uh, the NOS button and take off? Well, the ultimate measure is you look at the teams because it's the same car for two guys. And what are the results difference between right. those two drivers in the exact same race car? Right. And it's often 18 wins to one. Yeah. So like, I mean, just, for example, yeah. Red Bull, yeah. you know, it, yeah. I mean, Max is on a whole nother level. Yeah. Everybody knows that at this point. But I my, think he's won 15 races, I mean, this year out of 20. I think he just hit 18. Is he? Yeah. Um, but my question about NASCAR is, uh, does that translate to NASCAR? Are there guys who are noticeably better drivers than other drivers in the, in the field? There? Yeah, I would say the number one driver, hands down, in NASCAR is Kyle Larson. Okay. 
But he didn't take the championship. No, but he took it last year. Okay. He took it two years ago. And um, it isn't always a guarantee because so many crashes happen that right. involve other people that you get taken out and you get, you get um, uh, DNFs. Okay. And uh, when that happens, that lowers your points a lot. But now NASCAR has changed it where there are stage points. And your sure. car may be set up to win the race, but that don't mean you're going to be good on fresh rubber or on, on a green track, which means cold tires and no rubber laid and down. Not for, rubbered in, yeah. That's right. So uh, get a car that's set up to win the race, and he may suck through the first half of it. So can you think of an example where there was a team that had, hadn't won much and a good driver, they signed a good driver, and he turned the team around? Well, the number 24, Jeff Gordon, you know, um, okay. uh, Jimmy Johnson, uh, you know, the, they had uh, Chad Canals was with Jimmy and Ray Everham was with uh, Jeff and those teams stayed together. So there was not a lot of quarterback trading, coaching, changing nothing. They became a team that ate and drank and lived and slept together for 10 years. You know a dude by then. You go to NHRA and you watch these guys tear down this 10,000 horsepower controlled explosion engine in 45 minutes and have it running again. It is ballet. It is incredible. So when you get something that is so put together that you can learn and do, and the driver, if he knows about a car, that's huge. But you get to put a guy in that's an engineer that mechanically may know, but doesn't know, like Kyle, um, um, uh, Bush earlier this year, he was riding a car and he's like, Hey, I think I hear this. And what, and it was just one little tone change. And in, uh, you've ever been in a race car, but Holy crap, they're loud, Bryce. You can't, you can't hear shit. You can't. And he noticed one little chink, chink something. And, and that's just to me is when a guy is in tune, you have nothing to worry about. But yeah, I mean, Kyle Busch, he went on a huge winning streak and went for several years in a row. Uh, Rowdy Bush, they said he was too rough. Um, he would take a bow and everybody would boom. Um, but Kyle Larson is the best in NASCAR today. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, Chase Elliott is a good, good driver and he's a winner. But teams, they make the difference. You win or lose on pit road. Okay. That's kind of, that's sort of what my question was, I guess, getting F1 at. F1 is 2.6 seconds. Four tires and gas. Oh, yeah, yeah. In terms of the, the stop right. times. Sure. Yeah. Sure. And as long as your jack button works and the guy's gun works, you're gone. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. But NASCAR, you have to move the jack around. You have to do so a, a pit road. And, and the traffic, but the crashes, it really, if you could say, you know, all the people that were involved in a crash were going to actually finish the race, then... I'm sure it would be a different story. And yeah, and I guess that's a real difference between How NASCAR. about a team that's not great, not highly funded, and not well put together? They didn't qualify well, so they're starting in the back, and so they never get a chance to come to the front because they aren't that gelled and not all that great, and they haven't bought the best of the best of the engine stuff, so they're back there in the crash, and they're always tied up in it. Yeah. They got two or three sponsors instead of 20. Yeah, that so makes sense. it makes a huge difference. So did you watch it, the big spectacle? The Vegas. Yeah. Vegas. What a spectacle, man. Yeah, I watched most of it. I uh, watched the other night as well, uh, Saturday night. For the qualifying. Yeah. yeah. And, um, well, let's start at the beginning, Bryce, and this is mostly going to be your show, but but Thursday was P1. Yeah, so... And P2? Uh, no, it was, this, well, Thursday okay, was so, the, so the story was they, they've been building up to this for a long time. They announced this race a year and a half ago. Yeah. And they knew it was going to happen. They went through several different track layouts. They knew they wanted them to run. They, this is F1. This is Vegas. This is... Yeah, Formula One in Vegas. Yeah. Formula One in Las Vegas. Yeah. And um, so they knew they wanted to run right down the strip for the main straightaway and going past all the casinos. For anybody that saw it on TV, it was just beautiful shots. I mean, it's just all the lights and the, the glitz and glamour of Las Vegas just shown right through. And they got this huge thing sphere. Now they got this gigantic, you know, what is it? 25 stories tall. Yeah. It was right in the, I mean, off a turn, they built a corner around yeah, it. They built a corner around it. So, How distracting is that? Well, it's anyway. interesting. They actually limited the number of colors they were allowed to use on the sphere oh. to, to try to reduce the amount of distraction. But okay. Um, yeah, so that all this money goes into it. They buy F1 buys land there in Vegas. They put a huge um, building there for the Paddock Club, 
and they get all this stuff done. And then on the first practice, nine minutes in, some of the uh, water valve covers that were on the Las Vegas Strip. Manhole covers, yeah. Well, it wasn't really a manhole um, in the proper than? sense. It wasn't dropping down into the sewer like the okay. big round mound. But it was still that but big was, of a plate it, of steel. It was, a, it was a metal plate on the road. They weighed 200 co- pounds. Covering up a water valve. And that the ground effect force, the suction on the underneath of the race car was so great, it ripped this thing up out of the street and it, it wrecked the um, Carlos Sainz Ferrari. Yeah. So they had to figure that out um, and they stopped practice one after nine minutes and they ended up having to fill the things with sand and then asphalt over them and just ditch the whole idea of having any kind of covers on the track. It was pretty amazing. And then wow. they did practice two. So there was a lot of, there was a lot of discussion. There was a lot of complaining. There was a lot of criticism, but in the end, um, the race was awesome. The, the, the quality of the racing, the track layout, um, provided tons and tons of action. And even, um, <clears throat> even Max, who was critical at first and he didn't like the opening ceremonies. They did a really big gaudy opening oh, yeah. ceremony thing. Oh yeah. But by the end of it, all of them agreed. This was a really, really fun race. But Max had to come out Dale Earnhardt style and he had to speak about <clears throat> things that were happening because he said it looked like a circus. Do people know that F1 is what, 200 and what, 50, 40 miles an hour in hairpin corners that they hug the ground and that this is a competition and that people die and that it's for a lot of money and prestige. And and his thing was that people are just out going to all these tourist things, having a drink and hey, by the way, there's a race in the background. And when they go, the European circuit, Bryce, it's, you know, it's, it's, yeah. it's not American. Well, you, um, <clears throat> NASCAR's beer, you know, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and, and, and bikini boobs and all that stuff. But F1 is not. But I think part of the beauty of what you get in formula one is it happens all over the world and they kind of, they really do try to embrace the culture of the, of the country that they're in for that race. And so the tone of the races are different wherever you go. I mean, you go to, you know, you go to Spielberg, Austria for, um, for that race. And that's nothing but a little, you know, mountain town. And so they're really, you don't get any of this kind of stuff that you got in Vegas, but then, you know, you go to Miami and they're kind of doing the Miami thing. Right. Um, but if the shots went too wide in Vegas, then they were going to show people walking in the background doing touristy things. They didn't want that. And Miami well, and, 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 um, and Texas, uh, circuits of America, circuit of America, they are different. They are, it wasn't, Vegas is Vegas, man. You right. know what I mean? But even yep. the announcers at the green, at the checker flag were like, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas? You know, and, and so they brought it into the show. But pretty much the only people in Vegas over the weekend were there for the race. I mean. Everybody else yeah. hunkered down. The, the hotel pricing alone, I'm sure, discouraged people when they looked yeah, into. Yeah, and ticket prices. You said something about like 200 on a Thursday practice was the cheapest seat they were going to get. Well, yeah, I think the Paddock Club three-day pass was something like 50 grand. And there were some incidents with the police on Thursday. Uh, fans were being told to get out uh, after P1. They weren't oh, they yeah. so, good for P2. So the thing about that was they um, they weren't planning on the night going that long. Once they fixed the problem with the, the water valve covers, then they went to go run uh, practice two. But all the scheduling for the security and everything else was not sufficient and they elected to clear everything out instead of um having you know lack security which i think was probably a good call in the end even though some people were upset about that but um that's that's the reason why they they did that yeah the season starts in march and it's a long season just like nascar uh their first race actually isn't even a race it's a it's a test isn't it and yeah, that's yeah. kind of very cool. Uh, NASCAR's cut way down on the testing. Some difference too about NASCAR and F1 that's really, really obvious is um, F1, the cars weigh half as much and the tires are twice as wide. And, and NASCAR, when you're driving, you are so loose, but the loosest you can get and still maintain means you're going to be the fastest guy out there. But if you run the car to where you have more grip and you're not going to wreck, you're not going to have good air and you're going to be slow. 
Yeah. So, so F1, they are, their G force downward grab is just incredible. Yeah. When those cars are, are really dialed in, they describe it as, is like you're on rails, literally. It just, right. the car does whatever and you have One of the to. cars wrecked on uh, like lap 31 and they were really surprised because the end car showed him just, I mean, like something had to break. He, he wiggled and then it was gone and he went in backwards against the wheel and broke the left front wheel off against the wall. And, um, but they were really talking about how surprising that crash was because, you know, why it was a place that you didn't crash. There was no passing going or anything, but it was one car crash. It doesn't affect anybody else. Yep. Verstappen won by two seconds. Yep. I think that's probably a narrow margin there was of a victory narrow, for, 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 for him this year because he's won by 10 seconds. Well, he was, he was way out in front and they actually asked him to drop back a little bit to help his teammate out who was in second place at the time to give him a tow on the straightaway. But it didn't it didn't last long because the Ferrari passed him anyways. Well, on lap second. one, he forced somebody out of out of bounds, and he got a five second penalty. Yeah, yeah, he did. He had a. But five then they had a, a crash, and they he made that up through that. Well, he he paid the five second penalty in the pit stop. Yes, his first pit stop. Yeah, but then he raced a little bit and passed some cars. Then there was a caution that drew him closer. But the the, the last it was a fifty lap race. The last twenty laps of the race were almost caution free. Yep, and. What a spectacular, he passed everybody and there was a lot of passing first to second, second to third and, and yeah. back and forth. And that was great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Leclerc took um, second place back, I think on the last lap yeah. of the race. And Perez um, was uh, what? Third. Yep. Perez yep. was third. Yeah. And, and turn one was just this epic opportunity for if you, if you could outbreak somebody, you could make the, the pass in yeah. turn one. And it was, it just happened over and over and over again. Yeah. And, and on that long straight, you know, you really saw the difference in the the uh, power units yeah. of the cars. Wow! And they were just flying past I mean, each other. They were flying, Bryce. Yeah, flying. It was uh, and and Verstappen hit, on turn one he hit Russell and and caused damage and broke and stuff uh, Russell's car and stuff. And he didn't get a penalty on that because he went over that white bump that was there, uh, breaking it off. And uh, uh, yeah, there was a few things that happened. Yeah, but overall, but he, but he, he came back to win. And you talk about quality of driver. Yeah. He, and and he, that was another he, one that even the commentators were saying, you know, if you just look at this all on paper, it just looks like Max is running away with the whole season, but right. he's had to fight. This was a great example of a race where he had to claw and fight and, and earn that victory. But his product is the best too. Yeah. Well, that car, I mean, everybody else is now trying to catch up to what yeah. they have done. Adrian yeah. Newey, clearly the best car yeah. designer, probably yeah. on planet earth. Without a doubt. So, um, right. Yeah. So it was fun. All right. Well, uh, we're going to uh, go to a break and uh, see if Todd's going to be around. Uh, if not, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, some uh, NHRA. And hey, Thanksgiving is around the corner. Eat some turkey. Welcome back. Appreciate you coming back to the show here, American Car Classics Radio Podcast. Uh, I'm Kenny Schofield, and this is Bryce Shanka in the, on the other side there. And uh, when we went to break, we were talking about some uh, racing and all this stuff. We talked a little bit about NASCAR and F1. Uh, the season, of course, is over for NHRA as well. Uh, they get back underway. Everything starts here in Florida uh, because they, they can do it sooner than anybody else. So we get the Gator Nationals. That's up in Gainesville. Bryce, you've ever been? No, but I keep having it recommended to me, so I'm yeah. gonna have to go check that yeah, out. We're definitely have to go do that. We're gonna go do. Um, we're gonna go down to Homestead uh, in February, and we're gonna go to the uh, Target 66 show and see what it is. I don't know. We're gonna take cars and stuff, and uh, and while well, I'm thinking about that, Rhett Riddle last week. Appreciate you coming in and hanging out and all that stuff. Um, uh, but we are gonna get down there, Bryce. At least you and I, and have a great time with it because. Um, Man, I think it's a super cool event where a lot of people get to enjoy themselves and be kids with their cars and be safe about it. So uh, real cool. Um, top Fuel uh, champions this year was Doug Kalitta. And uh, this is for the NHRA season, which did end last uh, last month. Um, in Funny Car, it was Robert Height. And uh, in Pro Stock, it was Dallas Glenn. Uh, for, for notables, 
I'd say that Brittany Forrest, she came in seventh in top field, and Steve Torrance was second. Um, in funny car, Ron Caps was second. Bob Tasker, the third, was third. Matt Hagan was fourth. John Forrest was fifth. Um, and and notables, uh, Matt, uh, pro stock Matt Hartford was in second place. Uh, Troy Coughlin Jr. was in fifth place. Erica Enders was in seventh place, and Greg Anderson was in ninth place. And um, it was a good season for a lot of people there, too. They have they uh, had a lot of good weather. I know that one race in F1 was canceled this year, Bryce. That was Italy. Was that weather? Yeah, because they had flooding. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they, they had just got massive amounts of rain, and the flooding was made it impossible to to run that. Not even to be able to, like NASCAR, they'll hang out till a Monday, sometimes even a Tuesday, to try to get a race finished. But F1, they weren't no, just with too their, massive. They with were, their glow hopping schedule, I mean, there's just, uh, there's barely enough time. And they're going from Las Vegas to Abu Dhabi. Yeah. In, in one week. So that's another one. You know, how much sleep do they get? Because, I mean, there are, they are, NASCAR goes home to their families every week. Right. You know what I mean? They they go home. Yeah, for these Formula guys, one, they basically get the winter break and they get the summer break. And other than that, you know, I think Max said he flew back to England in between races just to do simulator runs on the Las Vegas track to learn that. You know, but they're all over different time zones. I mean, yeah. it's got to be unbelievably difficult to just to get a sleep pattern. Yeah, and not just for them, but for the crew. Yeah. The engineers. Yep. Well, the engineers, there's there's the race engineers, but most of the, they all have headquarters and most of them are in England. And so the that that part of the team stays in one But I watch, there. there are race engineers because I watch them. They are often maybe not even at the track side, but they are in the garage and they're looking at and watching and thinking. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you, you, know, got, you got five or six people. Just all they do the whole race is look at data. Analyze. Look at data and what the sensors on the car are yeah. telling them. And then, yeah they'll notice a problem before it becomes a, a and so in NASCAR, issue. you got a guy that's measuring tire wear temperature. I mean, that's really, you know, and then you control a little air pressure or you put a little bit of wedge or something in it. Yeah. <laughs> Two totally different beasts. Yeah. But it's all amazing. Yeah. But is, is F1 Americanizing? Is it adaptable to be America and not have it be, just a show to the Americans? Oh, uh, no, I think it is. Um, you're seeing huge surges in guys doing what I, what I enjoy doing, which is, um, sim racing. You got tons of that going on now. Um, you got the three races in the United States. Uh, uh, FIA WEC is owned by an American company, Liberty media. So I'm sure when they bought, the whole thing the intention was to bring it to american audiences yeah and with the the netflix show showing the behind the scenes and all the personalities and one thing you can say about the the 20 guys who drive f1 cars is there's not a single one of them that's boring i mean they're they're yeah they're all over the world and they're all colorful characters and they're all young and they're all young yep i mean who's the oldest what, you know fernando alonso at what 37 uh, what is he no i think he's pushing he's around 40 i oh say. gosh 40 nascar driver drivers dave marcus i mean he drove till he was like 73 yeah back in the day yeah, yeah. well you know even up through the 90s and stuff yeah but yeah so so most nascar drivers now it seems like none of them are really 50 yeah, the one thing that was cool, uh, you know, the the one American driver, Logan Sargent, he showed pretty well. He was actually, um, he qualified well, and he was holding his position in the top 10 for a while, you know, eventually. It's just so hard, and it takes so much skill. You can have 10 good laps, but as soon as your focus starts to, to wane a little bit, the guys with the experience who know how to put a whole race together are going to go right past you. And then you talk about sleep patterns and how fatigued is a guy through a race. Uh, now is an F1 car nearly as hot as a NASCAR? Well, you so got these guys get on the track and they say they're doing, you know, 150 degrees. In a car. It's an open cockpit. Um, though, despite that in places like Singapore, they do complain quite a bit about how hot it is in the cockpit, even despite it being open like that. Um, so yeah, they deal with that a little bit as well. Yeah, I don't imagine there's a lot because now you got the halo bar and the windshield and and then the helmet takes up so much of the top of the cockpit that, that I wonder actually how much air 
you know, there must, there's a main spot that it probably pulls in and then, you know, does its thing and comes back out. Maybe that's not. Well, it's, it's certainly more than IndyCar with that window. That was a big complaint. Uh, when they added that window in IndyCar, the guys were com- saying it is unbearably right, right. hot inside of this. But they, vet, they built some vent boxes, I yeah, think, and yeah. stuff right so away. I'm sure they do some of that too with the, with the F1 designs. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's part of it. Nobody, nobody races cars because it's comfortable. No. NASCAR, they have to put a steel um, piece on their heel uh, or else the floorboards would burn their boots. Wow. I never yeah. heard that one. Yeah, absolutely. That's- when you watch NASCAR, when a guy gets out of his car, you look, he'll always take that and take it off and throw it in the car. No shit. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, so. All right. Well, uh, what else? Well, you were going to... Um- you were going to talk about the Turkey Rod Run. Yeah, well, the Turkey Rod, okay, well, right. So I was going to talk about the Todd Byron's uh, memorial for Dick Arbitel, which we'll do. Go ahead and do that. He hasn't called. So um, this is this is uh, two days before Thanksgiving. This is well, three days. It's Monday, the 20th of, of uh, November. And um, we have like the fourth largest swap meet and car show in the country come to Florida every Thanksgiving weekend. It's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, I had my mom went by there today that Daytona international speedway and said that there is campers tents. Everything's already going in. People are setting up. People come from across the country. So uh, they just spend the whole week there. Yeah. Yeah. And bumper while they're setting up and getting ready and getting the prime location to sell their stuff and whatever. Uh, people bring cars, people bring car parts, trailers full of parts. And they set them out and then you're looking for that one part. Man, I can't find an, an, an air pump for a, you know, and it, you go and you, there it is, 1965 and something. It's and just, it's just a whole world of. It's a Daytona people. International Speedway. Do you know anyone that's ever spent actual Thanksgiving there, like done the turkey and the RV and everything like that? I guess I've known people along the way to, that I've known were there that I go and I see time and time again that I've known, but not friends of mine have gone to do that. No, we're not that crazy. That's got to be interesting experience. Yeah, well, they have uh, man, Volkswagen uh, vans, the bug, bug Brigade. They all line up and they do big shows there. And, and it's a spectacle, man. There's a, a cruise on I think Saturday afternoon there's a gathered cruise that they do from one spot to another and just go down Daytona right and um, you know the weather's always you know really just pretty beautiful but this year uh, it does look like it's going to be just a beautiful weekend well and they got that what do they call it the Hall of Champions or whatever they got um, in the in the pit in pit row they take some of the some legendary cars and line them all up inside there and they fire up the engines and so they'll go, you know, one at a time. They'll let everybody listen to um, some engine revs of really uh, you know, just truly remarkable, historic r- racing cars and yeah. things in there. And yeah. You better have your earplugs if you're anywhere near that. Yeah. But you, you know, earplugs, the loudest thing I know is an NHRA top fuel dragster. That is spectacular. So, um, yeah, you know. Day. We'll have to do that uh, here again. I, we can probably maybe think, you know, O'Reilly's might just jump in there and uh, take care of that and help us out, get down there and do a little reporting on that. So you never know. It pays to have friends. So, um, yeah. All right. Well, uh, that's the Turkey rod run. And I'm going to go on Friday. Uh, Steve McConnell, who works here, uh, scuba Steve, he's going to be doing uh, Friday as well. He's bringing his truck and trailer because he's building a 69 or 68 Chevelle that he picked up this summer. And, um, he's got new floor pans and firewall already in it, but it needs quarters and doors and fenders. And, um, he's going to go looking for some strange stuff that he wants to do. He's going to have a thousand horsepower, big block in it. Uh, five something, five seventy two. I don't know what. So um, that's pretty cool. Um, the Dick Arbitel Memorial Rod Run is uh, brought to us by Todd Byron, who owns Todd Byron's Classic Restorations. And I asked him to try to get on the phone. He was going to go to the TA truck stop tonight out on Highway 60. And I don't know if he's got dinner and a plate of pancakes, which would make me really jealous, or if he is uh, just out of reception on it. So um, uh, there's there's Todd. And um, what is that? That's the... Um, that's the uh, that's a Daytona prototype. Yeah, yeah, prototype. That's right. That's um, that so, was owned by Byron DeFore, and that is at Meekum in Chattanooga, where it was sold. 
that has got the uh, 50 plus foundation on it, which is uh, Brian Johnson's uh, uh, contribution to uh, research for Alzheimer's and neurological disease. So um, that's pretty cool. But uh, yeah, so, so um, God puts on uh, this, this New Year's Day run that is for Dick Arbitel's memory. It's in memory of him. And um, it's really, really cool. And I didn't know Dick, but um, a lot of people love the guy. Just said he was incredible uh, mechanic, just world-class mechanic. And, and he had a Vega um, dragster that he built, a, a drag car. And uh, I've seen that. It was at Todd's last year, and that was really, really cool. It's a Vega wagon. Vega wagon, yeah. White and purple and some gold leaf stuff and pretty dope. So, um, yeah, I've got pictures of that I'll throw on. Yeah. His son, Rich Arbertel is now racing and doing some cool stuff with his Camaro. And, uh, he popped in here one day last year and just out of the blue. And that was awesome to see him. But, uh, but so Todd puts on, put on the, um, little, little flyer that he had there with the directions. This is uh new year's day and, uh, it's going to be on Monday now this year. And this is in Vero beach, Florida, um, that we're going to meet at the cracker barrel on highway 60. Uh, it's in the Vero outlets, uh, 94th drive. Uh, we're going to, they open at seven. So we're going to leave at 10. So everybody has a lot of time to get in there. Last year, there was uh, close to a couple hundred cars. I think, um, not everybody started out at, at Cracker Barrel. Uh, what we did is we left Cracker Barrel at 10 and we drove to Riverview Park and on US 1 in Sebastian, which is a great little park, a lot of good parking area. And a lot of people, when we got there, a lot of people from Sebastian and North in, in, in uh, Southern Brevard were already there hanging out, waiting. So uh, when we all pulled out from there, heading to the third stop, which was the, uh, or the second stop, which was uh, River, Riverside Theater Park, and that's uh, 3250 Riverside Park Drive in Vero Beach. So we all went to that park. That's a AACA show that happens there every year, and uh, it's, it's capable to park a lot of people, and it was a super large area for everybody. And we just, we just stopped. And and you, you're gonna park somebody different than you parked to before, and maybe you know them, maybe you don't. But we all just get to you know, maybe what, maybe cool the cars off. But uh, we get to sit and hang around and talk a little bit. And the people that did know Dick get out and, and kind of talk about a couple of stories and stuff. And everybody just gets to have a good time and and think about how prosperous the next year is going to be and 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 how everybody survived the last year. Um, so the the third stop, go back to that real quick. The third stop is going to be the House of Byron. Um, that is sixty eight thirty thirty three. 33rd street in Vero beach. Now Todd is, um, a really good guy and he cares about people and he wants to do the right thing and all this. And this is his, um, He's a wonderful host. Yeah, man. He's a great host. And he's got a pimping house and, and garage and some kick-ass stuff to look at uh, in progress because Todd is doing Todd Byron's classic restorations from his house. Uh, he got out of the commercial world and now he's private sector kind of thing and a lot more control of, of time and schedule and clientele and all the whatever's that go with it. And uh, he's got this nice little farm going on and, and all that stuff and his wife, Julie, and they are all at home and having a great time doing it. And he's built a couple big buildings and got some great stuff going on. So uh, he's at home and he loves it, but he invites us out here on New Year's Day and uh, he's got a barbecue truck. Last year he had uh, the world-class barbecue, man. It was incredible. Um, yeah, he's going to do a, he's going to do a 50, 50 this year. And uh, this is going to benefit uh, cancer society uh, as Dick passed from cancer. And so they're going to go on and um, do this 50, 50 thing. And uh, I know the dolphin auto is going to bring uh, some money for that to contribute to it. And uh, we'll see that American car classes can't contribute to that as a little bit as well. So um, I look forward to it, man. It's a great time. It's a great way to, if you, didn't drink too much and can't get up in the morning. Okay. I understand whatever, but if you can, you do. And if you're in the area, uh, and then right after this show, uh, comes, comes, uh, river ranch. And that last year was really cold. Two years ago it was even colder, I think, but it's, um, going to be a great show. And there's about 400, maybe 600 cars that show up at that. So, um, the, it's a, it's a good time. Cold car shows, but it's a good time. So, um, that's what we're going to be doing. Anyway, so listen, I, I'm going to wrap up the show, I guess. We're, we're, we're at the time and place where we're going to do that. Hold up. I want to uh, 
first wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. I want to say that it's been a long, hard year, and I thought we'd see more of a recession than we're seeing. Um, the inflation has sucked. It has hurt a lot of people. Um, I'm glad to to talk to you all tonight and be able to say I'm happy to know that you've made it through and that this year was a struggle, but uh, next year is going to get better because it can't get much worse. Um, the holidays are coming. Uh, Melissa Dunweiss, uh, her dad, Hot Rods for Henry. This is where it's right here. Uh, this is a shirt that I proudly wear. Um, that that is the foundation for people for suicide awareness. Uh, the winter brings depression sometimes. A long year, and then the holidays come, and maybe there's not a lot to look at visually, monetarily. So you look at what's in your heart and your soul and your friends and your loved ones, and you keep your feet on the ground. And as I always say. Reach out, talk to somebody. I don't care if it's a professional. I don't care if it's just a friend on a phone. Reach out, okay? Holidays get tough. Winter comes in, sets in. We become a little bit more isolated. We don't get to get out and do all the beach stuff. Bryce, we're blessed here in Florida. But yep. it gets cold. We got a homeless population. You know, we do have a big, big homeless population in it, and it does matter a lot, you know? So um, I just want to let everybody know that please, you know, as, as men in the car world and everything else, it's not a bad thing to have a problem that you need to go to somebody and say, man, what the hell do I do with this? Uh, so, so, you know, 772-584-1048. That's our hotline, our cell phone number. Fucking give it a call, man, if you need to, you know? I'll, I'll call you back. So... With that, I'm going to say I hope that everybody has a very happy Thanksgiving. We will be back in uh, December, I guess, and um, we'll talk to you then. Really appreciate you all hanging out. This is American Car Classics Radio. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. <laughs>